Wow. A busy body. Oh, look at that. It's a boy. Oh wow. my God, I knew it. It's a boy. <laughs> oh wow. Congratulations. Oh my yeah. What names did you have picked out? Tyson. Tyson, oh, that's cute. You did a great job, Mom. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I tried. Now it's Dad's turn to shine. This is his. This is his. This is his time. Yeah. This we owe this to him. This is. You know, I yeah. think that blessings I can't wait till come. you meet Winston. Yeah, me too. And Tyson. Yeah. Blessings always come on time. And I want us to have like this huge coming home party for him. He needs that, you know, he needs to feel that love. Like, we never let his hand go, yeah. even though all the distance. I'm sure that'll make him happy. Hopefully, we don't have to wait too much longer to find out. Just pray, nothing like praying. As the state of Michigan takes on recreational sales of marijuana, one man is currently sitting in the Muskegon County Correctional Facility. Michael Thompson sold three pounds of marijuana in the 90s. Thompson is considered the longest incarcerated nonviolent offender in Michigan's history. He was sentenced to 40 to 60 years in prison for selling weed to an undercover informant. The state says he was also in possession of a firearm. The gun wasn't in his possession during the crime. It was at his home while he sold the drugs at another location. Michael Thompson was convicted in May 1996, a jury finding him guilty on five felony charges. The judge ordered Thompson to serve decades in prison despite there being a plea deal at the time that would have resulted in probation. Because he was considered a habitual offender, Thompson received a 40 to 60 year prison sentence. The parole board has an opportunity to send his case to Governor Whitmer for clemency. The request for clemency will hit Governor Whitmer's desk tomorrow. do lottery. I'm gonna get a couple of these. Light breakfast. The thing I like about my lottery is being able to wait for it to come out and hope is your number. My dad's parole hearing is like the best thing coming up right now for me. He was such a good man, even when he went to prison for selling drugs and came home, General Motors offered him a job back again. And he got his job back. I guess he had this dream of how he wanted his life to be and how he wanted to raise his children and what he wanted for his children. So he probably wanted so much for us that he didn't have that much to offer. So he went to selling drugs. Hey, Kim, how are you? Hey, good. Do you have a minute? Sure. Mm -hmm. I wanted to touch base with you. I asked you last week to follow up with a parole board for Michael Thompson. Yeah. What's going on with that? Well, I haven't gotten any response, at least nothing that indicates something solid. I sent them another email indicating that it had been three weeks since they had responded. In I parole boards so. in other states, people answer the phone. You can talk to members of the board. You can talk to their secretaries. It's just bizarre to me that no one's responsive to us. Yeah. I'm going to try and schedule a call with Michael. I was just hoping we had something to give him, but it sounds I like I know. Not. I wish. I wish. No, give him my best. I'm really, uh, we'll keep pushing. Okay, thanks Katerina.
Sure, take care. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. The facts are someone came to Michael's house, discussed purchasing marijuana. He went to another house, got that marijuana, and then delivered it to the confidential informant. And they used the marijuana sale to search his house for the guns. At no point was a gun referenced, utilized, brandished, spoken about. Without the guns, it still would have been an offensively high sentence for marijuana, but he would have been maxed at 15 years instead of a life sentence. Police and prosecutors packaged the weed and the guns together like they were one big crime. Three pounds of marijuana with no weapon. You see how it doesn't make sense when we go to talk about the guns? The guns have nothing to do with the drugs. His record is not very substantial in the first place. And to see this kind of sentence, I can't imagine what was going through the judge's mind. I don't even think people would get sent to prison at all for those types of crimes today. We're really trying to keep our community safe. And nothing from these facts tell me that my community was unsafe based upon his actions. When you look at the whole of Michael as a person, his convictions are an outlier for the things he's contributed. Prior to these convictions, Michael was given the key to the city. He won awards through the NAACP. He led a gang walk. He's not a drug dealer who's turned himself around. He's uh, a community organizer who fell into some drug trafficking. It's very hard to get clemency in Michigan. You know, we have currently 33,500 people in prison. The, the chances of any one of those people getting their sentence commuted is, is vanishingly small. It makes me mad as hell. Everybody around Michigan freely smoking. And that same product that they have, my father's sitting behind bars for that item. The cannabis industry is projected to hit $24 billion in legal sales this year. We are not equal under the law in this country. One person gets on the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine, the other person gets 10 years in life. There are more arrests for marijuana possession than violent crime every year in the U.S. We're seeing legalization, and yet people are still languishing behind bars for something that people are now profiting off of. I heard Jesse Connell on that. Manufacturing is all. Okay, um, I want y'all to listen for a second. Daddy going to in front of the parole board at 9 a.m. And I want to thank you all for supporting me um, as a family. If they don't let him go this time, it's over. 2038 would be the day he get out. That's 20 years almost. Like 19, 20 years. It's something I don't want to see because you think about it, you do the math. He'd be 90 years old when he get out, if he make it. So if you all just join your hands together with me as I try to say a prayer. Hold oh, right here. Okay. Dear Father. I come to you today in reference to my father, Lord. Lord, I'm coming to you in good faith, knowing that you are my number one provider. Lord, my father is on the way to a parole hearing, and I just need you to heal the hearts and touch the hearts of those that he will come in front of. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for me and my children, my parents. We've been following the growing anger surrounding Michael Thompson's lengthy sentence. That man is asking the governor for clemency, something that was denied by the previous governor. 
Tweets from across the country call on Governor Whitmer to release him. Tens of thousands of people have written the governor and parole board calling for his early release. The board must now vote whether to send his case to Governor Whitmer for commutation. Fine. Nice to see you this morning. Happy birthday oh, to you. Oh, this is so nice. Happy birthday wow. to you. Happy oh, birthday, dear so Kim. Nice. Happy birthday to you. Oh, May the you. good Lord bless you. Oh. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Bless you. May the good Lord bless you. That's very nice. Thank you. Tim, do you have a, a number of how many people are speaking? Yeah, it looks like there's 11 that have indicated at the moment that, that they want to. Okay. Are you going to do a time limit of some sort? Generally five minutes. I was going to say five. Five is an awful long time. Uh, Feel free to shorten that if you want. I mean, uh, you think five minutes is a okay. long time? Imagine being incarcerated yeah, usually, 25 usually everybody, usually years. Usually yeah. This is so irritating to me. Give them two, but mm. I mean, you can, you can say a lot in two minutes. Uh, okay. It's just coming up over here as far as down, right? But when you look in here, they can see you directly in the face. Okay. <laughs> All right, Mr. Thompson, now I'll give you an opportunity to make an opening statement if you'd like to. Well, I waited, uh, waited 25 years uh, to to get to this point. And I, uh, you know, I, I heard a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, especially my family. I'm not that person anymore. I don't have that criminal mentality anymore, period. I'm done with that. All I want to do is get back to my life, get back to my life, and get back, you know what I'm saying, to try to uh, build me some kind of foundation for my kids. All right. Thank you. I think the thing that attracted me to take this case is that it's the most disparate sentencing I've seen in my career, which says a lot because I handle a lot of post-conviction matters and a lot of matters that, that deal with these kind of injustices. Beyond that, the governor in Michigan has unabashedly held the position that nobody should suffer lifelong consequences for marijuana convictions. We can't give Michael back the quarter of a century he spent incarcerated, so he will inevitably face lifelong consequences for this conviction, but we can commute the harm that's being done to him and his family with this ongoing incarceration. My father has grandchildren that he has not met. Um, he even has great-grandchildren he has not met. And I just want to bring him home with me. We could build a relationship and get our life back on track like we used to have. Um, he would give anyone a shirt off his back. He's a very good sense of humor. Mr. Thompson has always been a great person entrepreneur. He has so many friends in the community waiting for his release. Michael has demonstrated a lasting positive effect on those around him. Today, I ask for a measurement of mercy and justice. We believe the time Michael has served has repaid any debt he may have owed to society many times over. Uh, I am 25 years old, so this sentence that he has served is literally inconceivable to me. It is a lifetime. After learning that this man has served 25 years out of a 40 to 60 year sentence for selling mar marijuana, I was just compelled to do my part. We must do the right things, and I'm urging the parole board, please release this man so he can spend the rest of his life getting a chance to know his family. Mr. Thompson stated that he no longer has a criminal mentality, and that alone says it all. It's about whether we in the state of Michigan believe that his sentence was good. This man does not deserve to die in a prison cell.
Wow, that was that was uh Thompson, I, I, I obviously, um, I mean, hearing all of that, you have a tremendous amount of support, and I under, understand why you're emotional. Um, as I mentioned. Hello, this is a prepaid debit call from an inmate at the Michigan Department of Corrections. To accept this call, press zero. To refuse this call, Hey, what's up, man? Uh, how about, what do you think we got? Uh, how many more? How many more interviews ahead of me? <laughs> every day has become the same. You know, every day is the same. You don't never know when how they. I I, I didn't call my mother, and uh, I'm I've been talking to her just a regular conversation, and my mother said, "Happy oh, I forgot late happy birthday. Your birthday was yesterday," and I had to think about it. I said, "Oh, oh, oh yeah, it was my birthday." Happy birthday to you. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, baby. And I know you're going to be out soon. This call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. I just want to stay strong. So no matter what they do to me, I said they can't do no more to me, no more to me than they already done. I wish I could uh, uh, just uh, be a better father because I was playing from a great disadvantage by being in prison. That's the reason why I shut my business off for, for, over, uh, for over 20 years. Explain that to me, how you can take up another person's life and you get less time than I do. I, well, I love most anything, Cal. You, you'll find out if you ever see me somewhere in a restaurant. I love, and I love tomatoes, and I miss fishing. I'm hoping for somebody to step up and show some kind of humanity for me, you know, and, and quit playing these politics, quit playing these political games. With a human being's life.
Michael. So do you know why we're calling? I heard it's supposed to be some kind of press conference uh, released sometime today. So that's what I heard. Well, I'm excited to tell you that Governor Whitmer has granted clemency uh, a commutation to none other than Michael Thompson. <laughs> wow. Can you believe it? How are you feeling? Good. Real good. It's good. It's real good. Real, real good. <laughs> you just don't know it's been a hard journey, man. A hard journey. It ain't been easy. Once we strip away this artifice of thinking that the drug war is about actually helping people, we can see more clearly how unjust it is. If you were to not just look at what is the exact charge someone is incarcerated on, but how did they sort of enter this revolving door, you'll find that it had something to do with weed. It is a gateway. It is a gateway to mass incarceration. And that's how we should be talking about uh, weed being a gateway drug. Across this country, people are voting to strike down these laws against marijuana. Legalization will give us some financial tools that we can use through taxation and investment to try to repair some of the harms of both you know, long-standing racial injustices and the specific negative impacts of the war on drugs. At one time, I didn't, I didn't think I was gonna ever get out. It's just people like the ones I mentioned uh, really, really, really uh, kept me alive. And now, I got that out the way. Now I'm, I was going to let you know I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. 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 Take me to your river. Take me to your river. Ah. 